Although arguably portrayed poorly on screen, capital ship warfare is an incredibly important part of the Star Wars universe. We'll cover the basics of ship to ship combat on today's episode of Star Wars Battle Breakdown. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Battle Breakdown. As we did with Starfighter Combat, today we're looking at an aspect of warfare in Star Wars Universe and covering the basics. Specifically, I'm going to break down and explain five commonly used tactics. Some will be of general use, for example, how to best position your fleet, while others will be named tactics like the Akbar Slash or the Thrawn Pincer. Let's start with number one, Starfighter Management. And I know what you're thinking, didn't you cover the basics of Starfighter Combat in your last video? Yes, that's true, but you can't ignore Starfighters when looking at capital ship management. This is true because Starfighters are often tied intrinsically to capital ships, whether they're carried into battle literally or more figuratively tied under some sort of command structure. Starfighters are often the difference maker in space combat. So during capital ship warfare, you want to make sure that you have an integrated starfighter scheme. Broadly, you can classify the roles of fighters as protectors or attackers. Creating a starfighter screen is a very common defensive maneuver. Put simply, you spread your starfighters out in front of your capital ships so any enemy fighters don't have a clear shot at your larger vessels. However, defending enemy craft also comes down to fleet composition. If you're fighting an enemy that makes heavy use of starfighters, consider bringing along extra corvettes, gunships, frigates, small fast vessels with point defense cannons. On the other side, you can use one of the tactics we talked about last video, like the Nova Flare technique, in order to engage enemy capital ships without putting your own ships at risk. This works well for the Rebel Alliance, for example, who's heavily outclassed in pure firepower. I know this point's a bit messy, but all I'm really trying to say is do not ignore the offensive and defensive potential of starfighters, even when focused on capital ship tactics. As a note, it's important to know how many fighters you can launch at once, how quickly they can be launched, how many hangars your ships have, etc, etc. The next tactic I want to talk about is firepower management. The first aspect of this is range and firing arcs. A battlefield can and should be separated into different engagement zones. So when looking at a capital ship, for example, you have to know the range where you cannot engage the enemy, the long range engagement zone where your most powerful weapons can probably do some damage, the kill zone where all your weapons will be effective, and then the secondary and primary zones where the range is actually too close and although your weapons may be effective, your ships are susceptible to attack by smaller vessels. Knowing this is important for a ton of reasons, for example, fleet formation. If the enemy is in the long range engagement zone, you should feel fine about putting all of your Star Destroyers up and just firing away. However, if the enemy is in the primary zone, you'll probably want to protect your larger ships with corvettes and fighters. Knowing the enemy's range is also important. If you have any less durable ships, like carriers or interdictors, you'll want to make sure that they're not taking on too much firepower. Related to range is firing arcs. You have to know your weapon placement and where your weak spots are. For example, the Imperial Star Destroyer is very well suited for firing forward, but can also perform broadsides. The ship does, however, have a weakness near the rear. Mon Calamari cruisers, on the other hand, can't bring as many weapons to bear straight ahead, but don't have the same vulnerability and can also perform broadsides. My point is, know your range and firing arcs and make sure that the enemy is in a position to take as much damage as possible. When talking about firepower management, there's also the issue of weapon types. Although there are a variety of capital ship grade weapons, the most common ones are laser cannons, turbo lasers, and ion cannons. Ion cannons and turbo lasers can largely be classified as anti-capital ship weapons, while laser cannons are much faster and smaller and are used for point defense. Larger ships will typically have more heavy weapons, more turbo lasers, and will be more well suited for anti-capital ship combat. Smaller, faster ships, on the other hand, while usually still possessing a turbo laser or two, will usually have more laser cannons, at least proportionally. So keeping this in mind, you have to design your fleet in a way that protects the vulnerabilities and weaknesses of both the corvette style ships and the cruiser style ships. Starfighters, of course, can help supplement any weaknesses, with bombers being somewhat of a replacement for turbo lasers and interceptors and air superiority fighters helping with point defense. The Alliance, for example, is strong on point defense, but weak on heavy capital ship weapons. Because redesigning their fleet isn't really possible, this means that their starfighters will have to take on a more aggressive role. 
At tactic number three, we have a specific maneuver which I've chosen because it well illustrates the importance of firing arcs. I'm referring to the New Republic's Akbar Slash. It basically involves using a line of cruisers to cut through an enemy defensive formation. It's effective because almost all of the weapons on the offensive cruisers are effective, especially those on the broad side. While the enemy is limited in the firepower they can use, not only because some of the weapons aren't pointing in the right direction, but also because, at least in theory, some of the ships may be blocked. Now, obviously things aren't always this neat, the formation assumes that the enemy is all operating on a 2D plane, which is obviously not true given we're fighting in space, and that all ships are pointing forward, and for that reason the Akbar Slash really has with it a high degree of risk. A similar formation is capping the T, which relies on the same advantages and disadvantages. Again, I've really just included this tactic because it illustrates the importance of knowing your firing arcs. The fourth tactic I've included instead shows the importance of using technology, especially in unique and interesting ways. This time, however, I'm talking about an Imperial maneuver, the Thrawn Pincer. Interdiction technology is incredibly important, but outside of the scope of this video, I'll talk about it on its own at some other point. However, the Thrawn Pincer illustrates not only the use of technology, like I talked about, but also knowing your enemy, and maintaining an element of surprise, even after the battle's begun. But anyway, the Thrawn Pincer requires at least two groups of ships, an initial fighting force, and other other vessels stationed in a nearby system. The first ships need to have at least one interdictor cruiser, which will project a gravity well. This not only prevents the enemy from escaping, but will also pull out any ships from hyperspace. Typically, interdiction fields are used against enemy ships to prevent escape or travel, but the field can also be used to pull your own ships out from hyperspace. Hyperspace jumps have some degree of uncertainty. You know basically where you'll end up, but you can't narrow it down to meters and probably not even kilometers. However, the interdiction field pulls ships out in a precise location. So say you're facing off against an enemy cruiser. You launch the interdiction field, manipulate it so it not only captures the ship, but also is cast just outside its position. Then you jump in a ship from a nearby system, which appears right behind your enemy. This is almost exactly what Grand Admiral Thrawn did at the Battle of Kat Kristak, and he was extremely successful. Let's move on though, and look at the final tactic for today's video. So you've defeated the enemy fleet that was protecting a homeworld or a manufacturing facility, what's next? Sure, blockades are feasible and possible, but there's something even more interesting that I'd like to talk about, orbital bombardment. Orbital bombardments are actually fairly common in the Star Wars universe. On one hand, we have the Imperial Base Delta Zero, which basically destroys everything on the surface of a planet, turning it to slag. However, BDZs were extraordinarily rare. Much more common was precise attacks, destroying an individual base, or perhaps a city. With a large starship, typically the turbo lasers would be powerful enough to do the job, but there's also recorded instances of missiles or other munitions being used. The main issue that you might run into is the presence of a planetary shield. Shields will fall to prolonged bombardment, at least given enough time, but can easily give the lockdown planet time to ready their defenses, call in reinforcements, and basically just defend themselves. But that just about wraps up the basics of capital ship combat in the Star Wars universe. Let me know what you think of this video, what would you like to see me break down next, do you have any questions, and did you enjoy it? If so, make sure to drop a like, and subscribe for more content. I would also like to take a second to plug the Eckhart Slatter Discord, we're over 7,300 members strong, we talk about Star Wars, Mass Effect, Halo, we organize live streams and community game nights, and really the Discord is a whole lot of fun. You can find it at discord.gg slash Eckhart Slatter. And hey, while you're off YouTube, make sure to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Eckhart Slatter. And if you'd like to support the channel, consider donating on Patreon as well. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, this has been Eckhart Slatter. May the Force be with you.